This weekend, activists and concerned citizens are gathering in Chicago for the annual Socialism Conference. As the American elections teeter forward, plagued with dissatisfaction at the two major political parties, the Socialism Conference takes a step back and presents people with a fundamental question. Can all we do is just reform and tinker with the system, or can we build a new democratic workers-run society here in the United States and internationally? Ashley Smith, along with Danny Katch, are two of the Socialism Conference's organizers who spoke to The Real News about the purpose of this year's event and its importance as the country gears up for the presidential elections this fall. This year... There's going to be a lot of sessions that are geared toward trying to meet some of the thirst that's out there for people trying to figure out what socialism is. One of our roles is that we try to be the memory of the working class. But our history tends to be buried, and it's often, it's, it, if we leave it up to the, the corporate media, if we leave it up to our education system, we often will never uh, get to learn the lessons of, you know, a group like the Black Panthers who are demonized all the time in this country. Well, let's actually have, let's, let's, let's get together for a couple hours and talk about what their ideas really are about, what they succeeded at, and let's also talk about what they failed at. Ashley Smith, who writes for the International Socialist Review, and Danny Ketch, who's an author and contributor to SocialistWriter.org, both feel that what the Socialism Conference brings to the political landscape is a reverence for history, without which, they say, we're bound to repeat old mistakes. Karl Marx himself said in the Communist Manifesto, he said the history of all hitherto existing class societies is the history of class struggle. That is, from when we transformed ourselves as a species from hunter-gatherer societies into class societies where a minority owned and controlled and exploited the labor of the majority, um, we've had unceasing class struggle. The story of class struggle is one that defines the socialism movement in the United States, and it's a story that both Smith and Ketch say has been somewhat lost in American history, not only because those in power tend to ignore it, but also because the economic boom after World War II convinced many people at home and abroad that the severe inequalities of the 19th century and before were finally over. The U.S. had the largest economic expansion in the world. Half of the world had been destroyed by World War II, and the U.S. was rebuilding it. And uh, you know, a series of unique factors, and, and one of the, the radical fit truths that I think we have to face right now is that the world we live in is actually more typically what capitalism looks like. It is what it looked like in the 19th century, in the 19-teens and 20s, a growing inequality. Um, and I think that's why you know, that book that Thomas Pickley wrote, Capital in the 21st Century, made, was making that similar point, that the norm for capitalism is not a, tie, you know, a rising tide lifting all boats, but it's actually a growing gap between um, a small, uh, wealthy elite and, and the vast majority of people. The, the conference is meant to go over those broad theoretical arguments, but also root them scientifically in the history of class um, societies and specifically different strategies to transform capitalism over its last 150 years. Smith and Ketch say the Socialism Conference is also an opportunity to discuss the limitations of the ballot box and to begin putting pressure on the corporate elite from the outside. I like to think of it as that there's a dialectical relationship, um, a, a give and take between having an electoral arm of the struggle with the place where real change is really won, which is in the workplaces, through strikes and through uh, social protest movements. The last time we get we got major social reforms was in the 1960s, and it wasn't by electing Lyndon Johnson. It certainly wasn't by electing Richard Nixon nor was it won by trying to vote for Democrats, say the McGovern campaign of 1972. It was won by the civil rights movement, which destabilized American society. It was won by the Vietnam anti-war movement. It was won by the women's liberation movement, the beginning of the LGBT liberation movement with Stonewall. That is, there was a whole process of mass social struggle that so frightened the political establishment that they felt forced to give reforms. And if you look in Europe or elsewhere or even in the United States, that if you don't have an alternative on the left, the right wing will take advantage of it and divert people's anger into immigrant bashing, racism, homophobia, attacks on, on uh, women, etc. So we have to provide a message and strategy of struggle, solidarity, and voting your principles and your project at the ballot box as well.